All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's topic is Healthy Gut, Happy Mind. Before we get started, just a couple of items to take care of. We will have hopefully time for questions at the end of the presentation, and you can type those in by clicking the Q&A section in the lower portion of your control panel. We will be posting a, a recording of the webinar on our blog. The link for that will be shown at the end. And if you would like a PDF copy of the presentation today, there will be a link to download that on that same post as the recording on our blog. If your question does not get answered today, please email our support inbox, which will be shown at the end as well. Okay, so today we're going to talk about gut health and how it affects our mental health things like mood, anxiety, and depression. We've done webinars in the past on gut health in general, so some of you who have seen those or some that have just done your own research on gut health, you may know that our gut affects so much in our bodies. Things like our immune health, inflammation, metabolism, heart health, sleep, digestion, the list goes on and on. Today, I want to focus specifically on the mental impact. Then I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your own gut health so you can get all those great benefits. So how does your gut help or hurt your mental health? What is that connection there? Some scientists believe that there is such a big connection that there is actually a second brain in our gut, seriously. Now, not one that actually thinks, but one that communicates to our main brain. Now, here's how. The human gut is lined with more than 100 million nerve cells. Now, nerve cells are important because they relay information throughout our body. The gut has more nerve cells than the spinal cord, and it also has more than the peripheral nervous system, which are all the nerves outside of our brain and our spinal cord. There's even a name for the nerves in our gut. It's called the enteric nervous system, or ENS, which includes all the nerve cells in the lining of your GI or gastrointestinal tract. And it's connected directly to our brain stem by a nerve called the vagus nerve. Now, the ENS is responsible for controlling digestion, all the way from swallowing, breakdown of foods, nutrient absorption, to the end of the road, elimination. And we're discovering many more ways it affects the body as well, specifically related to our mental health. The ENS plays a role in producing 30 different neurotransmitters. Now, neurotransmitters are chemicals that help transmit messages in our body. An example you may be familiar with is serotonin, which is called the feel-good hormone. It transmits a positive message and helps regulate our mood. Many antidepressants actually work by increasing serotonin. Now, get this, 90% of serotonin is manufactured in the digestive tract, not in the brain. When I found that out, that blew my mind. Hopefully it blows your mind as well. Other examples of neurotransmitters that can come from the gut include dopamine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and GABA, which are critical for things like mood, anxiety, and concentration. A doctor from the Johns Hopkins Center for Neurogastroenterology, Jay Patricia, I apologize, that's probably incorrectly pronounced, but this person has done extensive research on the ENS. He talked about those that struggle with IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome, and the symptoms that come along with that, like bloating, constipation, upset stomach. He and other researchers are finding evidence that irritation in the gastrointestinal system may send signals to the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord, that trigger mood changes. He has stated, for decades, researchers and doctors thought that anxiety and depression contributed to these problems, meaning those stomach and GA problems with the IBS, constipation, diarrhea, things like that. But his studies and others show that it may also be the other way around. These new findings may explain why a higher than normal percentage of people with IBS and functional bowel problems develop depression and anxiety. Now that's important because up to 30 to 40% of the population has functional bowel problems at some point in their lives. So if you struggle with mental health or GI health, it's certainly worth paying attention to your gut. Doctors are actually starting to prescribe antidepressants for someone that has irritable bowel syndrome, not because they think it's caused by depression, but because these medications can act on the nerve cells in the gut. It makes that ENS or the second brain communicate better with our first brain, our main brain, if you will. Now, in another study, UCLA researchers gave healthy women a fermented milk beverage, some with a probiotic, some without. I'm going to touch here on probiotics and prebiotics here in a bit, but in a nutshell, those things help improve gut health. 
Then what they did is they scanned their brains while they looked at pictures of people with different emotions on their faces. The women who had the probiotic didn't have as big of an emotional response as those who did have the probiotic. Now what this tells us is that they were better able to control their mental state, which again is key for those struggling with mental health concerns. Now this is only a start obviously, but it's a really positive one. Now one final study and then we'll move on. This one comes from Belgium. Microbiologists recruited over 1,000 people, 1,054 to be exact, to study their microbiome, which is the makeup of bacteria and other microorganisms in your gut. They found that 173 people in the group that had been diagnosed with depression or had a low score on their quality of life survey were actually missing two kinds of microbes compared to those with a higher quality of life. Now this group even went a step further and looked at data from another group, um, Dutch participants, and found that the same two microbes were missing from those who had issues with depression. That's fantastic, right? Obviously there needs to be more research done, and it is being done as we speak, I'm sure, to help figure out more and then the actions we can take to help. But basically, this is saying there's a whole world of possibilities that could open up to helping those people with depression and anxiety, mental health issues in general, and most likely other illnesses as well, right? We're unlocking lots and lots of good stuff here. So with that in mind, what can we do to help our gut and possibly help our mental health, along with all the other benefits that I've already mentioned, but mental health specifically? There's lots of things that we can do for our gut health. Now, the key is focusing on the gut microbiome, like I just mentioned a minute, a minute ago. It's made up of good and bad bacteria, and we want to make it contain more good, less bad. Makes sense, right? So let's start with probiotics and prebiotics. They sound pretty similar, but they are different, and they actually have different functions. Probiotics are actually the good bacteria that are found in foods and su some supplements. They are what help fight that good fight in our gut, moving that balance of the microbiome in a better direction. Now, prebiotics, on the other hand, are actually food for the probiotics. So these are both very important, and they both work together for that gut health. So let's start with some examples of probiotics that you can include in your life to get you started here. Yogurt, um, this is a big one and one that many of you may already know. Um, it's kind of more a marketing thing that, that people know a lot about yogurt. But one big thing to point out with yogurt is that not all of them contain what we call active or live cultures, which is that probiotic that we need. So make sure you just read the labels and look, it should say on there, it has to say on there, contains active or live cultures. Also, on the yogurt side, be sure you choose a yogurt that isn't loaded with additional sugars. Um, typically, the best flip flavor is going to be plain. Um, now, I know what you're thinking, plain's not super great, <laughs> but you can flavor it up with some cut up fruit yourself. You can add your own natural sugars rather than just the added sugar that they typically put in there. So again, make sure it's got active or live cultures. Make sure it doesn't have a bunch of added sugar with it. Kefir uh, is another good option for a probiotic. It's a fermented milk drink. You're going to hear a lot about fermented foods on this list as I go along. Now, kefir is made by adding kefir grains to cow or goat milk. Kefir grains aren't like a grain that you would think of normally. It's actually bacteria and yeast. Uh, kefir is actually considered a better source of probiotic than yogurt is. It contains several major strains of that good bacteria that we're looking for. And it's actually generally well tolerated by those who are lactose intolerant. Um, and you can find uh, kefir most typically in the yogurt section of your grocery store. So keep a lookout for that. Sauerkraut is another good probiotic. Now, disclaimer here, this is an excuse to run out and eat, you, eat a bunch of broth with sauerkraut on it, but just know that it is a good probiotic because, uh, again, it's one of those fermented uh, type foods. One thing to keep in mind with sauerkraut, though, is that you need to choose the unpasteurized version as pasteurization kills that active bacteria that we're looking for. So if you're going to do sauerkraut and you're looking for the probiotic benefits, you're going to want to look for a raw sauerkraut uh, to get those benefits for the probiotics specifically. If you're not looking for that, you can choose whatever you'd like. Uh, tempeh is our next good probiotic. Another fermented food, it's actually a fermented soybean product. Uh, it's used as a meat substitute for a lot of people as it's nice and high in protein. It actually comes kind of in a patty-like uh, shape. 
fun fact with tempeh, it actually has prebiotics as well. So win-win on that. All right, moving on. Kimchi is yet another fermented wonder. This is a Korean side dish that's usually made from cabbage, uh, but can be made from other veggies as well. But again, lots of good bacteria in there. So that's something to look for if you're out and about or at the grocery store. Miso is our next one. This is a Japanese seasoning. Uh, miso soup is probably what you've most, most of you have had it in or most familiar with. It's a great source of fiber and protein as well uh, as those probiotic qualities. Next we have kombucha. This one has probably gotten the most buzz in recent years. It's a drink, it's become a lot more popular. It's basically just a fermented black or green tea drink. But again, lots of probiotic qualities in those drinks. Again, some of those, since it has become more mainstream, some of those do have some added sugars and things. So again, just read your labels when you're looking at, at kombucha and those other types of drinks and any products for that matter. All right, to end with, how about one of those that a lot of you probably have in your fridge or cupboard, pickles. We know that pickles are cucumbers that have been pickled and left to ferment. Again, there's that fermentation process. One note here with pickles and the probiotic benefits, if you do your own pickles oh, or if you uh, buy some at the store, if they're pickled using vinegar, um, that actually takes away that probiotic effect. So if you're doing it yourself or if you're looking at the store, it needs to be pickled just with water and salt. So again, keep that in mind because I know a lot of a lot of people use vinegar. So if again, if you're looking for the probiotic effects, you're going to want to stay away from the the vinegar side of it. Now I want to take a minute to discuss supplements. You can get probiotics in capsule form as well in supplement form. Now they're not going to have the same amount of those variety of benefits as getting your probiotics through foods, but they can still be an option for you. Uh, please talk with your doctor uh, to see because there's lots of different factors that go into probiotics specifically. Um, if you've got some health concerns or anything like that, you really have to be careful with with things like this. Um, and also, probiotics are considered food supplements, not drugs. So they don't have a lot of regulations around them when it comes to how they're made and even what they actually contain. Um, so there's a lot of good processes out there, but you really have to do your research to make sure that you have a good, a good brand as well. Um, and like I said, you just need to be careful if you have immune system concerns or have illnesses or, or background of anything. Um, just something to consider with supplements. And again, always chat with your doctor before you start any of those types of things. All right, so we got you some good probiotics, probiotics if I can say that. Now we need to feed it with our prebiotics, right? One of the big things we look for in prebiotic foods is fiber. There are a few fibers to look for, and we'll ex I'll kind of explain those as I go through the list here. Uh, but here are some of the best prebiotic foods to include in your diet. Now, keep in mind, this is not a comprehensive list. Neither was that probiotic list. So keep your eyes open. Do some research yourself to find some even more good options. So we'll start with ones that you're probably a bit more familiar with. Let's start with simple apples and bananas. For apples, pectin accounts for about half the total fiber content. Now, pectin has really good prebiotic benefits. Apples are also high in what are called polyphenol antioxidants, which in combination with that pectin have been linked to improved digestive health, good gut health, right? Bananas are another good source of fiber. Another interesting property of bananas is that unripe bananas, those green ones that some people love, some people don't love as much, they're high in what is called resistant starch, which has good prebiotic effects. So those of you who love those green bananas, eat up. You're getting another prebiotic effect if you're eating those unripe bananas. Uh, how about oats and barley next? Both of these grains uh, contain beta-glucan, which is a great pre prebiotic fiber. Now make sure you're choosing whole oats though to get that benefit. So, you know, steel cut oats, whole grain oats, just make sure it's the whole grain um, because that's where you're getting that beta glucan. That's where you're getting all of those fiber and all those benefits from those grains that we do eat. Make sure they're whole grains. Asparagus is another good source of prebiotics and is a really easy veggie to incorporate in your meals. You can steam it, you can boil it, you can roast it. There's so many good ways to prepare it. And I'll actually give you a recipe here at the end, so keep on the lookout for that. All right, next we have garlic and onions. Garlic is one of those herbs that has so many benefits, so might as well add prebiotic to the list, right? 
Uh, it has a couple kinds of fiber that feed good bacteria. It also has heart health benefits and is an antioxidant, which can help fight against things like cancer. Onions are a good source of inulin as well, which is a great prebiotic fiber. So flavor up those dishes with garlic and onions, help out that gut. Leeks are actually in the same family as onion and garlic as well, so they do have similar benefits and you can use those in lots of ways with cooking there. So we've got, we've got some foods, we've got some ways to flavor them up, so we're on a good track here. Now I want to hit on a couple that maybe you haven't tried in the past. Um, chicory root. Chicory root comes from a plant that is in the dandelion family. More to come, as you can see I have dandelion greens on here as well. Uh, the roots can be roasted from chicory root and ground and are actually used to make a non-caffeine coffee, coffee alternative because it has a similar taste and color. So a very cool way to use chicory root and get some prebiotic effects as well. And then back to those dandelions. Dandelion greens are a great source of fiber, a high portion coming from that inulin, uh, like I mentioned before, and it can be used in things like salads. Dandelion greens are also anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, among other benefits. Lots of good things from those wonderful weeds that we don't always appreciate, right? <laughs> Keep in mind that the greens aren't, they're, the greens are those leaves, they're not the stems and the yellow flowers. So you can keep those flowers for putting yellow streaks on your friend's arms or whatever, but I'll, I'll actually have a recipe with dandelion greens here too in a bit that I'll show you kind of how to use them and what they look like. All right. Now that we have a good list of foods to start incorporating, what else can we do to incorporate our gut health? Keeping on the nutrition side for just a little bit longer, I want to talk about some things that we would want to avoid rather than add. We've talked about some good foods that we can include in our diet. Let's talk about some things that we might want to cut down on um, that can harm that gut health. And you probably guessed it if you listen to any webinars, sugar and artificial sweeteners. Uh, there is research that points to the theory that eating a lot of sugar or artificial sweeteners may cause an imbalance in those gut microbes, meaning that, again, that good versus bad bacteria. Now, it's always a good idea to cut down on our sugar intake in general, so this is just another reason to add to that long list. So, again, watch that sugar content. And with the artificial sweeteners, just be aware that it could affect that gut health. Next is be smart with antibiotics. Antibiotics can damage our good bacteria in our gut. Now, before you say anything, I'm not telling you not to take antibiotics or to say no if you need them. They are absolutely necessary in some cases, but sometimes they aren't necessary. And the CDC has actually said that doctors prescribe about 30% of antibiotics unnecessarily. So all you need to do is just ask more questions at your doctor's appointment to see if an antibiotic is actually necessary or if there are other options for you. Now, if you do get prescribed an antibiotic, that's just fine. Just be really mindful of those other habits. Make sure you're incorporating those probiotic and prebiotic foods as much as you can just to help combat those effects of that medicine on your gut. Again, I understand that sometimes we need it. That's 100% great. We love antibiotics when we need them, but if we don't need them, we don't want to take them. Right. All right. Exercise is next. Not only does exercise help your heart, your weight, your mood, everything else, it could also help your gut health. Research is promising with this and with all the other benefits exercise brings, it's something that you do just want to make sure you're doing regularly anyways. So again, if it can help other things along with your gut, we got good stuff going on. Sleep and stress are two other examples of things, again, we should be focused on anyways in our overall health, and the fact that healthy habits may help our gut should just be another reason to keep working in those areas of your life as well. So again, just healthy overall, um, you're going to have positive effects on your gut and in turn, your mood, ideally, right? Uh, if you're a smoker, keep in mind that smoking can actually alter your gut health and it can actually increase that bad bacteria and actually can lower the good stuff. So same thing. We all know the negatives um, of smoking in general, but gut health can be affected as well, which again, if you're looking to help your mood or a lot of other benefits with that gut health, really think about um, that smoking and what, what damage you could be doing. And then last tip, 
play in the dirt. <laughs> I know it seems backwards, right? There's so many germs outside um, with the, we want to be protecting from those bad germs. But actually, if we expose ourselves to the diverse germs and bacteria that are outside in nature, within reason, of course, you don't have to eat the dirt and I don't want you to go jump in a sewer or anything like that. Just play outside, play with your pets. Um, your skin's going to absorb some of those good germs, or not necessarily good germs, but it's going to absorb some of those. It's going to diversify your gut health. Um, and the more we expose our bodies to this, that, that diversity helps us in the long run, and it can help establish a healthy gut. So get outside. We're getting close to springtime. For those of you who are up in the northern part of the country, we're getting close. So get ready to get outside. All right, so to end today, I kind of alluded to this. I want to include some recipes for you to start using some of these great foods that I mentioned. Now, before you start vigorously writing, like I said at the beginning, you can download these slides. We'll be posting the recording. We'll be posting uh, the PDF that you can download on our blog, which I'm going to show here in a little bit. So don't make your hand all tired. I'm going to go through a couple recipes here, but download them when you can when that blog is posted here. So we'll start with that tempeh. Like I said, it's often used as a meat substitute, uh, so that's the recipe that I chose to use it with. Uh, simple ingredients, coconut or olive oil, eight ounces of that tempeh, nutritional yeast flakes, which if you're not familiar with those, you can find those in the spice aisles or the bulk bin aisles, depending on where you shop. Um, so that might be another thing you're not as familiar with, but you can find those. Uh, you will also need broccoli and garlic, which, as we know, helps gut health as well. So multiple pre and probiotics for the win in this recipe. And you can see the directions here. I'm not going to go through everything, but it's very easy. And then you can add in some quinoa, which is a fantastic uh, protein, whole grain. Uh, you can add in brown rice or cauliflower rice, even better, to complete this dish. So one thing for you to, to look at here to diversify your uh, menu plan. Next up, asparagus. I mentioned that it's very versatile as far as different ways to prepare it, so I just wanted to give you an example of how easy it really is. This one has asparagus, olive oil, a bit of Parmesan cheese if you want. Um, of course you want Parmesan cheese, or if you're me, you do. And garlic, there's that garlic again. Um, sea salt, pepper, and then some extra lemon juice if you want at the end as well. Uh, roasting veggies is my absolute favorite, so that's what you do in this recipe. Again, just give it a try. It's an extremely simple side dish that packs a ton of nutrients, again, along with those healthy gut properties as well. So again, don't start writing all these down because I'm going to move on, but you can download it here within the next day. And then dandelion greens. Let's eat some of those weeds, shall we? Um, you can buy these dandelion greens, but you can also grow your own, of course. Um, we want to cut down on our pesticide use anyway, so embrace that dandelion crop. <laughs> it has so many benefits. Now, I also included a link at the bottom of this slide with some tips uh, to grow some in an actual garden if you don't just want those free-range dandelions around your yard. Uh, but for this recipe, back to that, you'll need one pound of those dandelion greens, garlic and onion. See how nicely this works out with our multiple prebiotics as well. Uh, chili peppers in this recipe. This doesn't say optional, but in my book it's definitely optional, but you can decide for yourself uh, with the chili peppers there. Uh, the actual recipe, if you follow that link at the very, very bottom, does use vegetable oil, but I did swap it out for olive oil just for better nutrients overall. And then, of course, there's that quote-unquote optional Parmesan cheese garnish again. Just don't do a whole bunch, but it's good stuff. Um, this ends up being a nice salad of sorts to combine with a protein, or you can just eat it on your own as well, whatever you prefer. So, again, there's a way to get in some dandelion greens. And then last recipe, let's have some of that chicory coffee I mentioned. If you already do decaf in the afternoons or you're just looking to cut down on your total caffeine consumption, this could be a great option for you. Uh, you can purchase already roasted and ground chicory root or you can do it yourself if you want. Uh, but once you have it done, you simply boil it or use a French press. That online link at the bottom gives you some other variations as well. And I included one um, that has our dandelion root as well, just to mix it up. So there's a couple recipes for you. Hopefully you guys are finding some good things to include to help that gut health. And that is all I've got for today. So let's go through the upcoming webinars and everything before we get to questions. 
Next month, we're going to talk about stress, specifically at work. Um, we all have it, right? It's a natural thing. It can be a good thing, but we're going to talk about ways to manage your stress at work. And then in May, we're going to talk about some things your exercise routine may be missing. Lots of good stuff with any exercise you do, but just some other things that we'll talk about to consider as far as things you might want to think about including in your exercise routine. And then for those of you who do have lifestyle rewards, and if you have the questions for Lifestyle Awards, most of you will only have to submit that you watched the, the video today. But if you do have the questions, here are those. I'll come back to these in a minute um, if you want to jot them down. Otherwise, again, you can download that PDF, which you'll be able to see uh, on our blog post here in the next 24 hours. But I do want to get that contact information up here as well. Um, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, and then that blog in the middle there, that's where you're going to find this recording. That's where you can download these slides if you want the recipes or if you want those questions for lifestyle rewards. And then you can always give us a call. Uh, if you're not able to stay around for the question and answer session here, we can certainly uh, chat anytime. Give us a call or you can shoot us an email on there as well. So I'll go back to those questions for a minute here. And then 